Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. I am Chris Longo, Head of Sales and Marketing for AOPEN. Uh, thank you for joining us today as we discuss the future of retail is now. So we're discussing how key brands are currently adapting uh, to the current changes. And today we also have one of our key partners, Express Image, who is definitely no stranger to navigating these type of solutions. So a few housekeeping tips just before we get started here. If you have any questions during the presentation, please send them uh, in our chat function or the Q&A at the bottom to our panelists. We'll be uh, gathering the questions and towards the end of the presentation, we'll be able to answer those. Uh, also, we're gonna be having an on-demand recording as well as a copy of the slide deck that will be sent out to everybody as soon as it's available following the presentation. And now I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Miles Schofield. Thanks, Chris. Uh, welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us on another A Open webinar. Uh, my name is Miles Schofield. Uh, you just heard from Chris Longo, our marketing director. Uh, I am the technical solutions engineer for A Open America. And of course, as Chris mentioned, get, uh, <clears throat> with us here today, is uh, the CRO of Express Image, Thomas Patchen. Um, so uh, thank you all once again. What, so what are we actually talking about today? So what I'm going to cover is just uh, my view of how uh, certain factors have affected the retail market in 2020. So this will sort of just be an overview of what's been impacted and what I view will be a long-term impact and potential uh, meaningful changes as we move forward, right? Uh, <clears throat> uh, the next one is, of course, uh, analyzing certain uh, sectors and, and a lot of the solutions that they've implementing, uh, not only been implementing lately, but the, the important types of solutions that I view moving forward. Uh, and then the, uh, what Thomas is going to focus on is really the, the types of success that uh, his business have found as the retailers have been um, uh, then trying to take advantage of uh, the market changes, not only this year, uh, but also moving forward. He, so he's going to get very specific uh, and really list out a lot of uh, good use cases uh, to show you what uh, individual types of businesses have been um, doing this year. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first <clears throat> thing I want to talk about, um, which is very always very, very relevant um, in our industry, is uh, when we talk about retail is the balance between uh, e-commerce or online retail versus uh, physical retail or brick and mortar, right? And uh, how this conversation usually goes is, you know, well, a lot of people sort of look at 2020 and they say, well, everything must have moved online, right? And uh, what the chart on the left shows is that that's somewhat, that that's obviously true. I mean, uh, May and June, 78, 76% more online sales growth year over year. So that's a massive change. But the whenever I talk about this topic um, with people, you always have to contextualize it. And, and uh, this is a point that Amazon always makes in terms of how much of the market they actually own, is that when you actually look at uh, e-commerce market share of total retail, uh, which is an extremely broad term, uh, they technically only make up about five, 6%. Um, so I'm just referencing the same type of data from 2018 to uh, 2020, 5%, uh, 6%, right? So is the 78% growth of five or 6% uh, that meaningful to the overall market? Does it actually uh, impact uh, um, 2020 in a meaningful way, and it will will it impact um, <clears throat> uh, uh, retailers going uh, forward? So, uh, generally speaking, if you look at a lot of art articles now, due to all that uh, extreme uh, online growth this year, because it was sort of forced, uh, you know, they're looking at Amazon or retailers in general, uh, capturing co close to 10% of the market. So, the real question here is, does 10% of the market? Uh, really matter yet? Is this going to cause brick and mortar retailers to really drastically change their strategy? So, uh, of course, when you talk about e-commerce, you got to look at, you know, who's who's driving it, you know? And, uh, and uh, as an example, of course, we all know Amazon's the clear winner here. And you can see other brands since 2018 have sort of crept up. The data on this uh, is actually from the same source. They just look different. Um, so Amazon is obviously the clear winner, uh, Walmart, all the budget brands, um, eBay, and then surprisingly Apple has been in third or fourth um, 
but those are the, those are the major online uh, retailers. So in terms of their ability to continue to capture the physical market, not only this year, but in the future, as they pass potentially that 10%, uh, the biggest factors that I've sort of um, been highlighting is that the biggest factor to online e-commerce growth, growth is age. Uh, if you talk to any retailer, um, one of their biggest challenges is that the, the majority of uh, people who use e-commerce are young. And so uh, this becomes a massive issue because, uh, you know, retailers could make big changes in terms of putting in solutions for cell phones and blah, 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 blah and all these sort of things. But uh, the bottom line is that a lot of their main customers just are too old to use that type of technology. So in terms of e-commerce growth, it is tied to the sort of uh, uh, the average age of the U.S. population and what type of shopping is being done by who, right? So you may go and talk to a retailer and say, hey, you need cell phone integration and app integration and blah, 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 blah. And, but they may be like, well, average age of our customers is 65, right? They, they're still using a cell phone from the 80s, right? So all these things are sort of prohibiting mass e-commerce growth because it's just not as accessible yet to that age range. Second thing I wanted to mention quickly as a factor in e-commerce uh, is brand position, right? Um, in terms of what these other types of brands are doing to compete with e-tailers such as Amazon, obviously <clears throat> it's all about online presence is the best way to compete. Um, but the other way that they're, uh, uh, they're competing is where there's opportunities against Amazon is brand position, right? When you're the market leader, you're, you're viewed as a generic company. And when you're viewed as a generic company, you don't, uh, you're, you're naturally dismissed for higher end business, such as, you know, uh, weddings or high end fashion and things like that. So Amazon could 100% create a new store that's more uh, specifically geared um, towards high end fashion and basically uh, uh, act exactly the same way. So they could sort of create a quote unquote luxury brand, but that's where the opportunity has been for some of these other brands such as Macy's, which is trying to capitalize on industries like the wedding industry um, and um, you know, uh, producing high quality registries and uh, all those loyalty programs to give a much more personalized, higher quality experience than what you would get from the Amazon wedding reg registry, for instance. So that's the first uh, thing to talk about. Next one, a uh, major effect of 2020, which, which was the forced social experiment of a meaningful amount of people working from home, right? Uh, turns out, well, according to The Guardian, um, actually 25% of people have the potential to work from home, which is a really interesting thing to think about. So if in 2021, a meaningful percent of the, that quarter of Americans that could work from home, if they do uh, end up working from home, what will that actually cause in the retail market? Um, so it was sort of a forced ex uh, social experiment this year, uh, as a lot of people were uh, forced to work from home who didn't. Um, and uh, I put this chart in the bottom left just because I thought it was interesting in terms of, uh, as you'd expect, um, in terms of uh, how it will affect the retail market. You know, a lot of the more wealthy people obviously have the opportunity to work from home, finance, tech, et cetera, et cetera. And so the key aspects of more Americans moving out into the suburbs, uh, working from home is, of course, uh, you know, in real estate, it's obviously having a huge effect. But in terms of retail, uh, it, it comes down to digital out of home with less people moving, you know, uh, in concentrated areas, uh, leaving their house less, less opportunity for digital out of home. Uh, and in-home advertising becomes much more important. Um, of course, a lot of the decisions people make on what stores they go to for retail is based off of commuter traffic. And if you have a meaningful change in people's work behavior, then that 100% can cause um, not only uh, have an effect on uh, uh, not only large retailers, but small retailers as well, which is my next point in terms of the SMB effect. A lot of small businesses are propped up by the fact that they're next to a tech company. And if that tech company decides, you know, that they don't need lava space anymore, then uh, the, in the future, there's no way for that, um, that small business to recover. So those are some of the key factors. Uh, uh, if, Amer if Americans workers really, really do make this shift. And I talked about this in a, a few webinars ago about why it's such an interesting topic because office space is so expensive and working from home is puts a lot of onus on the workers expense and things like that so it's a real interesting topic to, to cover uh, the last one is uh, of course the most volatile one uh, i decided to just to sort of talk about this in the general smb 
uh, market. Because as we know, you know, a lot of companies have done extremely well this year due to the fact that they're large and have cash on hand. But it's really the volatility of the small businesses that uh, is completely uh, unknown. So you can see this Bloomberg article. Uh, what is happening to all these small businesses? And in the article, it lists, you know, firms with fewer than 500 um, employees account for 44% of U.S. economic uh, activity. So this is where I view the biggest volatility of 2020 is going to come come from. So what are those businesses doing? Did they all take mortgages out? Did they all, you know, borrow money from their parents? Uh, you know, it's it's impossible to tell what they did. Uh, there's very very bad data, which is why. Uh, if you know, let me know. I'll do some investing. But uh, yeah, low visibility could have a cascading effect. No one really knows what's going to happen uh, in terms of are the, all these SMBs going to come back? Are there going to be loans available? Uh, things like that. So if you're a solution provider uh, looking to uh, address the space, uh, you have to think very carefully about uh, what type of uh, customers you're going after if you think there's going to be a meaningful change in this area. So those are the three points that I wanted to make about uh, the key 2020 changes. Uh, will that 9% uh, uh, from e-commerce grow and grow and grow, continue to grow? Uh, will a meaningful amount of the, uh, the population start to work from home uh, and change that dynamic? And then the last one, of course, is uh, the fact that we have this huge volatility in the market currently, which could have a multi-year effect. But uh, yeah, no one knows. All right, so my next section is really talking about solutions uh, that brands have been using uh, in 2020. And uh, the main thing I want to uh, uh, point out first before we get into these precise solutions is obviously uh, in this industry, uh, we've been telling uh, retailer brands to do all of these things for years and years and years. So I shouldn't be saying anything too surprising to you today in terms of uh, what these brands are doing, because we've been telling brands to do this stuff for 10 years, right? Um, and so a lot of this stuff is 2020 sort of fo forced a lot of brands to face the reality that they need to actually implement these these solutions to uh, adapt to these uh, uh, market forces, right? So um, let's talk about grocery first. So grocery is a really uh, interesting topic to me because uh, uh, it's, I viewed it as one of the most resistant to 2020, right? All of them had to remain open because they're the food supply. Uh, and, you know, I wanted to bring up the Amazon Fresh failure because uh, the Amazon Fresh failure, if you don't know what it was, is that Amazon was trying to sell food, uh, perishable food on uh, Amazon, right? Uh, Amazon, of course, has a grocery, but it's non-perishable. And what they learned from that failure uh, was that people are very particular about their perishable goods, which is why they ended up buying Whole Foods, right? Um, <clears throat> so Amazon figured out that consumers want to see their product and they're very particular about it. Um, and uh, Whole Foods gives them the perfect opportunity to interact with that customer in, their, uh, in that way. So what are uh, uh, companies like Amazon and other grocers uh, doing uh, to try and adapt to this new landscape? So um, so the main one is all, all the first three, right? Uh, this online ordering, this was a major thing, that gear shift that had to be done in 2020. I mean, I talked to people who barely know how to use a computer and they were like, oh yeah, I just ordered all my groceries online, which is something I never expect them to say. So this was a, the, all these sort of systems uh, where you can shop online and go and then they hand you the bag. Um, either through the locker or the curbside pickup, or eventually I believe uh, groceries will have a drive-through. The major solutions that I see really at groceries is how to, and I'm gonna be saying this a lot, is it's all about frictionless. Because online is very, very frictionless, right? You click a few buttons and it shows up your house a few days later, right? And so <clears throat> physical retailers need to try and it's what we've been telling them for years. They need to try and emulate the online experience. And, and that's why they're starting to put in all these things like locker, lockers and curbside pickup. And um, so some of the other types of solutions um, to talk about in terms of grocery is, you know, if you don't have a drive-through, how can you optimize curbside pickup? Uh, you know, a lot of people are exploring, can you do Wi-Fi cell phone tracking or Bluetooth cell phone tracking or facial recognition? Uh, to create company profiles in the parking lot? Can you create car profiles in the parking lot? So if you know that the person who ordered this drives a, you know, a blue Camry, you know exactly where the blue Camry showed up and parked, right? So all these types of solutions are being uh, um, researched and looked at uh, um, this year in particular, just to sort of streamline the whole process. 
Uh, the last one, of course, is that I'm going to talk about more when we get into QSR is this whole idea of home delivery and, and the gig system, right, which is something uh, I view as a sort of large problem that someone needs to step up and solve. So that's, that's what I sort of view about grocery. <clears throat> so let's talk about QSR. So the state of QSR as 2020, I sort of view it, uh, and, 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 you know, everyone started to order out. Basically, um, every restaurant, every QSR, every small uh, restaurant needed to effectively have a delivery service, right? And the whole sort of funny thing about it is that pizza always got it right. It turns out that every restaurant should have probably been operating as a pizza restaurant um, because it catered to that sort of, uh, uh, it, it built in that sort of delivery uh, you're stuck at home and you just want food. Now, the gig economy has shown up to sort of fill that need, but, you know, will people continue to pay an extra $20 for their McDonald's or KFC, right? Right now, the gig economy is very expensive. So I view the, the biggest opportunity um, in QSR, uh, honestly, as whoever solves this problem on how to, uh, how to deliver you McDonald's um, for a reasonable price. And it's, it's a very, very difficult uh, problem, right? Does there need to be a, uh, an, a, a, you know, an Amazon-like Grubhub, right? Does Grubhub need to say, okay, if you give us $120 a year, like Amazon or whatever it costs these days, uh, we'll do any delivery from any restaurant, you know, in, in within 50 miles of you in 30 minutes, right? That's obviously a massive logistics ch uh, challenge to solve, but it's those sort of ideas um, that are going to happen, um, that, that are going to happen in the next uh, few years. So in terms of actual key solutions that uh, the industry is talking about and all these articles are talking about is, of course, now that you have less people out, let's say more people are working from home, uh, it's really, once again, online or, uh, ordering pay and loyalty systems, right? If you don't drive by that McDonald's every day where it's super convenient to stop, stop and pick up, they need to give you additional incentives to order from there, right? And so uh, one really cool idea um, from Forbes uh, article is, is uh, will you subscribe, right? Maybe instead of having an overarching Grubhub subscription, maybe you get a McDonald's subscription and they, they guarantee free deliveries for X amount of price for X amount of months, right? So you can see how uh, there's lots of opportunity for QSRs to try and uh, emulate uh, these online businesses. Of course, once again, similar to the grocery market all, all, uh, or the grocery sector, it's, it's all these things we've talked about. Uh, curbside pickup, home delivery, uh, and drive through 2.0. You can see I included a shot of, uh, this is something I've always been telling QSRs, is that um, ever since that I found out that the majority of the, the business that uh, QSRs do is from their drive through I'm like, why does that thing not have like diamond encrusted? Why is it not the fanciest experience uh, you, you've, uh, you've ever done. If it's the majority of your business going through there, it should be the highest quality procedure. And I think QSRs are finally getting that, is that they're going to make uh, drive through super nice. There's going to be a Grubhub lane. There's going to be a quick pickup lane. There's going to be an order lane. So I agree with this sort of, um, this image on the, the bottom right, uh, 100%. All right. Um, next thing I want to talk about, <clears throat> last sector I want to talk about is uh, department stores. Right. Um, so this is, uh, once again, department stores have always been tricky. Um, there's obviously a lot of different types of them. Uh, and a lot of solution providers, once again, have been uh, pushing this physical presence much co uh, must coordinate with online presence. Right. Um, this is the only way to compete. I, I already listed what, you know, things like Macy's is doing uh, to try and compete. Um, <clears throat> but the first thing that I want to point out as sort of a reference uh, that I always thought was pretty funny is that back in 2018, when Kohl's partnered with Amazon, it was sort of like, if you can't beat them, join them, right? Because Amazon is looking for, uh, to streamline their return process, right? They've recently, I think, uh, partnered with another carrier uh, so that they can take advantage of their, uh, their physical presence as well. But you can see that uh, it was a massive opportunity for Kohl's um, to... <clears throat> partner with Amazon and now they have all these people coming in Amazon to drop off stuff and they they of course you know they want to put the Amazon return way back in the store so you gotta you gotta walk by everything but Kohl's is one of those stores that's really victim to um, uh, the age issue as well Kohl's average age of a shopper is 52 I think um, and so one of the other advantages that partnering with um, 
uh, Amazon was is that they, they get younger people in there because you get all those online shoppers and you, you force them to come to the store to conveniently return their Amazon product and they have to sort of like check out some stuff. So overall, you can see that 13.5% is uh, insane growth. Uh, from just this one decision to offer uh, Amazon returns. Other types of uh, solutions, of course, um, that we're really from, uh, familiar with, and Express Image is gonna bring up a lot of these too in a much more specific manner, is uh, um, omni-channel wayfinding kiosk. So omni-channel, if you don't know what it is, uh, it's how you streamline, um, uh, how you don't lose the sale, right? So you're in a shop and they don't have the pants in your side and you can click a button, uh, usually at a kiosk and it just, uh, it instantly orders that product at that side, size and send it to, sends it to your house, right? So the, the whole idea is that um, when you have a physical store, you don't want to give the option to the customer when they leave to not buy the product. So Omnichannel allows people to immediately turn that mo buying momentum right into a sale right there. Right, um, so omni-channel devices uh, are something that our market's been pushing for a long, long time and uh, is slowly being adapted. Um, and of course, once again, I can bring up the loyalty. So once again, you know, department stores already already put uh, push loyalty. I'm sure you probably all have a, a few credit cards <laughs> from uh, all your favorite department stores. So they of course push them in that way, but um, but this, the, across the board, across these three sectors, it's always about the app. And once again, that, that app is very difficult because once again, it's very ageist, right? You're, you're, uh, the, the, you want, of course, your primary customers to install the app, but if they don't have the latest iPhone and they don't install any apps, it's very, it's very difficult to balance uh, the programs that you're running. And, you know, the other reason, as I mentioned before, loyalty people are less uh, less inclined to want to drive places to buy things. So those, in, those additional incentives that you can uh, give over the loyalty programs and the loyalty apps that are, are, are super crucial. And that's how people are competing with uh, Amazon. For instance, of course, um, you know, department stores have opportunities to actually beat Amazon in pricing a lot of the times because they have a uh, pricing advantage due to inventory and volume and things like that, uh, that may not be reflected um, on Amazon. So they're obviously trying everything they can um, in this, uh, this venue. Uh, and then of course, uh, all the, the, the frictionless things that I've talked, uh, the Kohl's is of course automatic pickup return. Last thing I thought was a really cool idea um, that we've talked about um, lately is the optimized try-on. So um, the advantage of online is of course, you know, you can buy things, you get it quick and easy, but then you have to go drop it off, right? So what a lot of stores, specifically Loft is trying, uh, is that you can shop online, you can do all your browsing and pick out your clothes, um, but you don't actually have to buy them yet. You just sort of show up at Loft, you try everything on and you buy what you need and then you omni-channel that which you liked but they didn't have your size in, right? So it's really, it, it, really, really great uh, solution to um, how to manage that frictionless experience that actually has some advantages over the online uh, online experience because you show up, they got everything ready for you to go. It's like creating an appointment um, and then you just buy what you need to buy. Um, so you don't have to go through the whole box delivered, repackage, box back, drive to a cold, drop off, I ordered clothes off of Amazon type of deal. So so yeah, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of interesting uh, solutions in, in this, uh, this space as well. Um, uh, but I, th I think I'm almost out of time on my section. Yeah, 24. So let's, uh, oh, one last thing. I, of course, got to talk about some of the AOPEN ad adaptations that we've been making uh, this year. So all those solutions, a lot of them uh, involve kiosks uh, to create more frictionless uh, uh, interfaces for wayfinding and ordering. Omnichannel devices are, um, are uh Omnichannel devices are usually kiosks as well. Um, so uh, AOPEN has introduced our new antimicrobial non-toxic surface uh, protection, uh, which we offer on a lot of our all-in-ones for kiosks. Um, we, of course, had webinars and talked about um, a lot of our work from home options, uh, you know, terminals on Chrome and uh, uh, conferencing devices. And we're also looking at releasing some um, uh, conferencing cameras, both for at home and in office. Stay tuned for that. And of course, uh, we've had multiple webinars on schools and enterprise um, 
and uh, retail looking at uh, thermal imaging solutions. So we have a kiosk module for that and also a standalone module. So just a quick uh, talk about that some of the things that we've done at AOPEN to sort of approach this ma uh, market and give other options to our customers this year. That being said, let's flip it over to um, Thomas um, to go into uh, some of what he's experienced this year. Well, thanks, Miles. I appreciate it. Hopefully everybody can hear me, Miles. You can still hear me, right? Yep, you're good to go. All righty. Well, thanks, everybody. Um, we appreciate the opportunity to be here and appreciate um, AOPEN, who's been a long tenured partner of Express Image and are excited about participating. Now, my style is typically conversational, so please feel free to submit any questions or comments that you have because we want to hear from you and we want to hear discussion about your brand's goals and objectives. And we can certainly um, answer those today, or if we don't get time, we can schedule a personalized demonstration for you at any time. But our style is certainly, we believe this is your time. So feel free to ask any questions that you guys have. We're gonna share six business cases that are being worked by our retail brand partners, seeking to maintain the health of both employees and customers. We've selected each of these cases because they support and align with Miles' presentation on how brands must adapt and create frictionless solutions to seamlessly align the shopper experience between online and physical stores. But first, we wanted to give you a quick overview of who we are and what we do. Um, Express Image uh, Digital is part of a 70-year-old fourth generation pub publishing and printing company that back in 2015 spun out our digital business into a wholly owned subsidiary. For the past five years, we've been delivering innovative software and system integration solutions for retail brands. We've developed a guest communications platform that engages the customer before, during, and after a visit using innovative wayfinding, digital signage, and video walls that are seamlessly integrated with the brand customer touch points, including websites and mobile apps, and via their on-site hardware to bring the brand's digital marketing messages into the physical store. We've created a holistic evergreen software platform that grows with the customer's brand over the life of the term without having to rip and replace. Our passion is to bring a smile to every user engagement by exceeding their expectations. And in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, we've expanded our platform to support retailers by safely welcoming shoppers and diners to their location in a planned, controlled, and frictionless environment. And one of those solutions that we have is what we call Express Res. And Express Res is a direct response to the COVID-19. Like AOPEN and some of their temperature taking solutions, we also created a platform co-developed with one of our innovative real estate partners out of Puerto Rico. And what I want to do is just quickly go through the six stages um, of the Express Res to make sure everybody understands it. And then I'm gonna give you three business cases of how these are being implemented today um, as part of a pandemic um, solution. First of all, we have open. And this is where the entrance vehicles for shoppers that integrate into the brand's existing shopper touch points. Next, they have reserve, which is where shoppers can make a reservations to plan their visit or simply show up and use a QR code to be virtually added to a queue. One key feature um, that we have is reserve. Now with reserve, shoppers can um, make a reservation and um, plan their visit. And the important part here is accepting the terms and conditions because by accepting those terms and conditions, brands can reduce the risk that they have. Next, we have arrive. This is where shoppers in their customer journey of coming to a venue or to a location can arrive at a predefined uh, time slot or enter via virtual queue that's simply done by scanning a QR code that's displayed in the parking lot or in the location entrances. Um, and this is where um, retail brands can leverage upcoming volume by monitoring reservations and consumer patterns 
in real time analytics that are built into the platform. When they come to admit, everybody knows what it's like to go to um, a venue or a, st a store or a location. Um, they simply must have their PPE equipment in place, whether that's face mask, take a temperature check and then enter the location. And then they're gonna shop and they're gonna shop in a um, safe and comfortable experience and receive the services that they come from. Now, one of the things that's interesting is a recent survey found that 46% of the shoppers um, believe that the safety measures put in place by supermarkets and retail stores have been inadequate and poorly managed. So safety today is still a key measurement for shoppers in this post-pandemic um, experience that we're trying to create for um, the shoppers and consumers. And then the last one is depart. And we know when people depart. And so what the brands are able to do is send thank you notifications um, or a promotion or for people that may have scanned or joined the queue that never entered the location, they're then able to send a follow-up message to say, hey, why didn't you enter our location and offer them a bounce back um, offer or something like that. Um, our first business case uh, is with our development partner out of Puerto Rico. Um, these um, innovative um, developer has two malls, each one is approximately 1 million square feet. So they have a total of 2 million square feet in their two malls. Um, they were facing a couple of problems. Number one, they wanted to offer a safe environment by controlling the access points and avoid congestion at the entrances and the exits and their food courts. Secondly, they wanted to manage access for employees, including their tenant employees. And finally, they wanted to adhere to government occupancy requirements of 50% less occupancy. All of these problems were the genesis of what we now call Express Res, that's specifically designed to manage access for shoppers, employees, tenant employees, using a queue and reservation solution. Um, so what we were able to do is give shoppers the ability to create a configurable number of reservations for an upcoming period. In um, EFI's case, they wanted to give shoppers the ability to make five reservations, up to five reservations for the next two weeks. For the employees and the tenant employees, EFI created work groups and assigned a perpetual reservation that was tied to the employee's work schedule. The results were tremendous. Um, in the first 30 days, that had over 130,000 new mobile app downloads and over 80,000 reservations. The short term, shoppers and di diners visited without long lines and experienced no real congestions. Long term, EFI has hundreds of thousands of active mobile app users that they can market to and engage. Additionally, one of the byproducts of the solution is Mall now has a better understanding of all on-site workers and the ability to market and share offers and promotions with those workers who are the most frequent visitors to the mall and be able to engage with them. So this ties to um, Miles' slide about mobile apps and the engagement um, with the um, retailers and the shoppers. Our second case is with a um, drugstore chain that was seeking to grow 10% during this upcoming flu season. What they were looking to do is grow by over 10%. The problem that they were facing is immunizations in flu season starting in September was going to create high demand due to COVID-19 and the flu season. They needed a solution that was able to manage the ph pharmacist and technician time. They needed to have patients sign terms and conditions prior to arriving, and they needed the patients to be able to stay on site for 10 minutes after receiving their immunizations. What we were able to do is take our express res solution to allow the corporate team to manage the process, policies, and procedures. 
This allowed the local stores to manage the fulfillment and execute and to personalize the experience. To complicate matters, the brand also had to manage, manage three different fulfillment options that included drive-up immunizations, in-store immunizations, or outsourced at third-party locations. Um, we put our solution in there um, for each one of the patients to receive a personalized experience and this helped them build loyalty to schedule services so they wouldn't have to wait around sitting in the drugstore. And this should result in overall wallet share increase to get more fulfillment of prescriptions within the retail store, not to mention greater revenue through impulse um, purchases because they're on site in the retail drugstore chain. Um, the chain also wanted something unique where they didn't want to do the traditional business model of a SaaS offering. So we offered them a pay by um, use or a usage based business model. And so they weren't locked into a monthly fee. So that at the end of the four month um, flu season, they would be able to no longer experience costs. But the long term benefit that they're able to do is test more services of pharmacy options to have a lower risk and a lower entry barrier to test if they wanted to have people to come in for photos, for um, passports, or any of those other ancillary services that they were looking to um, bring in. Our last example here is a clienteling offering that we had through a third party partner that was looking to white label their application and embed it into their product and um, deliver a solution that was gonna bring new revenue streams for them. <clears throat> the problem they had was they needed shoppers to book time with a store associate without having to wait in line. Most of these being high-end retailers and they needed to integrate with existing Salesforce CRMs to track customer data and sales data. What we did was we gave them a solution that allowed them to track sales, allowed them to embed the ExpressRes platform in their SaaS solution that included integration with Salesforce CRM for a single personalized view of the customer and to track sales associates performance results all on their existing platform. So those are three examples and business cases of how we are using our COVID-19 response called ExpressRes. Our next solution is what we call our more of a traditional offering, <clears throat> that's Wayfinding Plus. Now, Miles mentioned this, and we've got numerous different um, omni-channel touch points that are available for our customers to um, implement. Wayfinding Plus gives customers access to the best-in-class Wayfinding communications platform while allowing them to achieve other objectives that include improving the customer satisfaction, local advertising, no, uh, event notifications, and personalized per, um, promotions that also can include capturing visitor demographics. This is a turnkey omni-channel solution that's integrated with our digital mapping portfolio and features a few COVID-19 product developments specifically the two at the end of the slide. Express Voice uses voice commands to control on-site displays and kiosks. Um, Express Command is a bring your own device or Boyd solution that puts Wayfinding Communications platform on the shopper's smart device by scanning a QR code. Now I'm gonna give you three specific business cases that we were able to use our Wayfinding Plus product portfolio in order to help um, our retail customers um, deliver a solution in response to the COVID-19. The first one is an IKEA franchise owner that wanted to assist their shoppers to find and move about their store more easily. As we all know, IKEA stores are big stores and they want you to follow department by department. However, the owner looked at their shoppers and wanted them to receive personalized directions to departments that they were seeking, but to avoid the congestion points 
due to store configurations and store designs. Secondly, they wanted shoppers to be able to search for any of the 40,000 individual products that they have in store and get personalized turn-by-turn -turn directions to the aisle and to the individual product bin. Finally, they wanted to be able to meet the government requirements that displays and kiosks must be touchless. The solution? We implemented our wayfinding uh, digital mapping solution that seamlessly integrated to provide custom directions to the destination that avoids congestion points. We integrated with their inventory database to give shoppers directions to any of IKEA's 40,000 products without having to walk through multiple departments that traditionally you have in most IKEA stores. And finally, we implemented a touchless solution with Express Voice that allows the shoppers to use their voice to control on-site kiosks, similar to Siri or Hey Google. Future enhancements will allow IKEA shoppers to utilize their personal mobile phones to scan location away aware QR codes that puts the wayfinding communications platform functionalities onto the shopper's smart device like iPhones or iPads. Our next customer is Mall of America. Miles touched on this. And this is one of our marquee customers that we have with um, AOPEN. We've got an omni-channel solution that includes kiosks, mobile, and websites. The problem, as you can see here from Mall of America, stated they want their guests to spend um, their time having fun, not searching for answers to the directories and looking for something. So shoppers needed a frictionless personalized solution to find what they want when they want it. So what we did is we deployed a solution that also had outstanding results. By working with MOA, we delivered a custom hardware solution on the Wayfinding Plus platform that increased user and guest engagement by over 250%. We reduced maintenance and support costs by 57% and cut user time on device by 42%. You can see these results um, speak for themselves and with AOPEN is an outstanding opportunity for the brand. Our fifth business case came to us um, through a um, third party partner of ours that was seeking to deliver local communications platforms. And we'll be using AOPEN products for this digital signage platform on starting with a pilot that had 10 specific locations that they were looking for. The lot's owner had several problems to solve. They were looking for a platform that can be remotely managed deliver localized messaging, including how-to instructions on, on engaging with the payment um, kiosk that they had, plus deliver localized specific advertising. They needed hierarchical CMS to assign locations by user login credentials. And oh yeah, it had to use a cellular network to update and control content. The solution was we created a custom CMS solution that is branded and managed remotely. It allows playback for the administrators to see what's being displayed on each touch on each screen in real time. The solution delivers content so it's cached on the media player prior to going live to ensure the user experience does not get interrupted by cellular access or network issues. Now, we've got an uphill opportunity to expand it to over 50 of the sites that we will be required to increase the lot revenue. But if it's successful, and we believe it will be, we'll be able to continue to expand into over 50 sites. Miles, we appreciate the opportunity to share the effects of the changes in retail using these business cases and welcome any questions or comments. So I'll throw it back to you, Miles. Thanks, Thomas. 
So th thanks for going through all those use cases. Um, so at this point, we're going to start to wrap things up. So let me just uh, make a few comments um, to finish, uh, finish things up. So uh, what you heard today was um, that uh, some of my main points were about 2020. Um, obviously, what are the things impacting the overall ra uh, real estate la uh, um, landscape in specific ways? Uh, I talked about, um, you know, the potential of a lot of people moving to work from home, uh, the SMB volatility issue, or that continued push for e-commerce to capture more and more of the, the market. Um, of course, uh, the second section was, you know, all of us, all the solution providers here today have always been talking about how edge computing smart solutions um, at these type of uh, retail establishments are, are key to delivering uh, frictionless experiences that um, mimic online, uh, the online experience. And that's how they, that's basically one of the primary ways uh, in which they compete. And uh, then of course, Thomas outlined specific types of technology um, where companies are really innovating to capture more of the market in 2020. What are the, what are the ways that you can make your brand more visible um, as people have these concerns um, uh, as, they, uh, as they're coming uh, out and starting to shop in the field again. So, uh, and then once again, um, you know, that innovation takes a lot of innovation, not only on the company side, but on the express image side. And that's really the value uh, that they bring to those companies is you got to be able to integrate with their, uh, their inventory system, their, uh, their personnel management system, sometimes their payment system, and uh, they can create those uh, type of interactive solutions. They can do all the integrations uh, and really create those unique uh, solutions in a very short time frame and make changes on, on them as well uh, to make sure they're as effective as possible. So uh, I hope you enjoyed today's webinar. And so let's take, um, actually I'll let uh, uh, Chris close it out. Thanks for, uh, thanks for time listening to me and Thomas. Um, so I'll let Chris close it out and then we'll cover some questions. All right, excellent, thank you for that. So we're gonna go ahead now and uh, wrap things up here uh, for time's sake. So thanks everyone for participating in today's webinar. And once again, I just want to remind everybody that we will have the slides coming out along with the on demand of this webinar. So we'll have the recordings available. Please feel free to share them with any end users, partners, um, or anybody you see fit for those materials. Keep an eye open for them. Uh, if you have any questions you can see on the screen here, we'll leave this slide up for a little bit at the end um, for the website. Uh, and or um, communication pathways for reaching out to uh, either of us. Um, we also want to take um, an extra minute here to also thank Thomas and Ex Express Image for joining us on the webinar and kind of sharing in their technology and how they are helping retail reopen and get back to the market and not only for the current situation the way that it is, but also helping um, combat the e-tail retail question that's been out there for so long. So thanks again to Thomas uh, for jumping on and thank you, Miles, and we hope to see you again next time. Thanks everyone.